first I'll introduce a couple of concepts and then Gary will talk about the React hooks part of it. First thing we are going to talk about today is SharePoint Framework Service Scopes, then how to use Service Scopes in together with React context, and finally, uh, how to use the React context, Service Scope, and uh, React hooks. And then Gary is going to come in and talk about more about React hooks as well. So before we talk about SharePoint Framework Service Scope, let me just kind of set some context of the web part which we are going to see. So uh, this is a typical org chart web part, which I was playing around initially when I was uh, discovering service scopes. So as you can see, it checks the current user, it gets their manager from the user profile service, and then it gets the reports from the user profile service as well. So for getting that, we obviously need to talk to the user profile service REST API. And the, the way we could do it is uh, is by straight away using the SPHTP client, which is available in the SPFX context. Or if we don't want to pass around the context, uh, maybe to your components, or maybe if the components are deeply nested within your React tree, uh, what you can do is pass in just the service scope. Now, the one good thing which passing in the service scope does for us is it allows us to make our components easily testable. So this is my component and using the service scope, I can register either the correct implementation of the user profile service. Uh, this is a custom service uh, or I can register a mock implementation. So if we are testing our code uh, and we want to return mock data depending on where the web part is running. So in this case, if the web part is running in the context of SharePoint or as a classic web part, uh, we are fetching real data from SharePoint. Whereas if it's not running there uh, using the service scope, we are fetching the data from the mock user profile service, which just returns uh, JSON blocks, blobs. So using service scopes, uh, we can register uh, register our services on the service scope, which is, so the service scope, stepping back a bit, service scope is a, the SPFX implementation of the service locator pattern where you register services on it and you can consume the services on it. And as far as I know, the SharePoint framework itself also uses the same kind of model for registering the AD HTTP client or uh, MS Graph client, uh, so on. So we are just using the same kind of model to register our custom third party services as well. If I go in user profile service, you can see here that the context is not being passed uh, passed in and uh, when you register the service uh, when you try to consume a service using this approach uh, the service scope is automatically passed in and then you can fetch the http client uh, page context and so on from it and directly make a call to uh, call to sharepoint now the one uh, one thing about this approach is even though you're not passing in the context, you are still passing in the service scope. And if any of your uh, child components in React need that service scope, you will have to pass that down, down the component tree. One way around that is by using the React context. What we will do in the React context world is React gives us uh, basically an object to store all the data we want, which is shared globally by the by the application. Now, this is different to the SharePoint framework context or web part context. So before we actually go and see how React context helps us here, we'll need to create a context object uh, in React uh, where we'll have the service scope property. Uh, and uh, now this is actually a different web part where all we are doing is getting the user's graph, uh, user's uh, details from the gra uh, Microsoft Graph API and displaying it uh, on the screen. So an implementation of this is, you can see here, uh, it is just displaying the username. Now the way we do that is first by creating the React context uh, object, registering with React context, and then from our top level component in the application, we just assign a value to that. And as you can see, uh, this hello user component, we are not passing in any uh, service scopes or any context to it. Internally, the hello user object gets the service scope from its properties, and then it is able to call the uh, Microsoft Graph uh, service to set the state and, and show the user. Now, how is this possible? We're not passing in anything here when calling the component, uh, but if we go inside the component, the property 
the service, service core property is already filled in. Now, the way we do that is with something called a higher order component in React, uh, which is if I go back to the hello user component, uh, when we export it, we just wrap it with the with service scope higher order component. And it is, think of it just like a function where you pass in uh, an argument. Uh, it uses the React hooks to get the app context from, uh, from, from React and then passes it in as a property. Once that uh, service scope is infused, it can, it can be then used to fetch uh, all the details or all the services registered from it. Now, I mean, it can be a, a bit much to wrap your head around all of this. So I can, I've got a few blog posts which, which kind of step through all the different aspects of the code. Uh, and then I'll post a link to this in the chat as well. Now, if you are familiar with React hooks, if you're familiar with React context, uh, this might seem a bit of an overkill to you. It's like, why am I not using the React hooks directly? And that's because React hooks work mainly with React functional components. And there might be already a lot of code out there which is using SharePoint, uh, class, uh, class components in React because that is what we have been using for a long time. Now, this is an easy way to just wrap your component with this uh, higher order component if you want to get started with hooks or if you want to get started with the service scope stuff. Uh, but if you're starting something new, uh, I think the recommendation from the React team is to start with hooks, start using hooks now where you can. And if that is your situation, then uh, the recommendation definitely is to go with a full hooks approach where you don't bother with the higher order components. You don't have to uh, do a lot of this stuff. And Gary is going to then next talk about a full hooks approach where you only use functional components and not class components. So Gary, if you're on the call, feel free to take it away. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So just show you the web part that we've got. It's very similar to what Vardaman was showing. It's the same output, it's the same example as what he's just shown. I'm um, just showing uh, the person's name, calling the graph. Um, so to go through uh, kind of what has been, been done in, in this approach is that I've used functional components for the, uh, the, the web parts and um, uh, just to basically show you how the differences between the two uh, approaches. So we're still passing through the service scope um, in um, uh, as a property, um, and we are still then setting the um, uh, the service scope uh, in the context, which is created in a similar way. Um, so we're creating this context here and reusing this in the web part. Um, so we have our app context provider, which is obviously providing this globally, uh, this service scope globally to all of the, the child components, uh, which where we've got hello user. Um, kind of uh, things to point out is that there's no this uh, involved in functional components, um, which you find in class components. Uh, if I go into oh, hello user. So now we can see that it's it's effectively doing the same job, but we're doing it in a slightly different way. Um, so we've changed to a functional component, um, and rather than using the uh, this dot set step set state approach, um, we're actually using the use state hook. So we're setting um, an initial variable um, for storing the name value uh, and creating a function that we're going to use to update the state with. Um, and rather than using a higher order component, we can access the global context directly um, from in, within this uh, within this component by using the use context hook um, to bring back our service scope. Um, and here we're using use effect um, in replace of component did mount. So use effect is a hook that will allow you to uh, run a function basically when your state changes. Um, although for this example, we're just passing in an empty array. This means it's just going to run the first time this uh, component mounts, which is useful for where you want to fetch your, your data. Um, so we are uh, creating a uh, graph client factory uh, by uh, using the service scope and then we call um, the uh, sorry we create a client and then call the me endpoint to return uh, the current user's name and then use the set name 
uh, function um, to update the state of that by accident. Um, and then in here, this is where our component actually renders. Again, there's no need for this here. Um, we can just uh, directly uh, access the, the state variable uh, by its name and it presents it on the page. So it's a, a function, a functional components, a nice, simplest, simplest easy way to uh, build your components now. Uh, it reduces a lot of the boilerplate. Um, and if you're starting to create uh, React components, um, then definitely, I think going through the hooks approach is, is the place to uh, to start. Um, so this code is available as a sample. Um, I actually pushed the PR last night uh, after uh, Vesa called me out on it on PMP Weekly because I didn't uh, put it forward as a uh, uh, as a sample. So hopefully uh, it will be available for you uh, to uh, to look at in the samples very soon. It will be definitely there pretty soon. Thanks, Gary. Right. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Wartaman. Really, really powerful stuff. Uh, really, really great stuff. Um, and uh, uh, this is exactly the stuff which we definitely want to also cover. Uh, so the efficient ways of doing development in the, in the calls. But then at the same time, demonstrating different functionalities and samples and solutions is super valuable. So thank you. Thank you for that.